Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Magnus and today we will be talking about application and URL filtering together with inline layer. So I hope you will enjoy this video and if you're new here, please consider to subscribe and uh, let's start the video. So this is in demo mode. So if we first make a normal rule. So to make a normal rule, we have already made a section title, access to the internet, and we will do uh, below. And normally in the old days, or maybe not so long ago, you will do the source to your, from your internal network destination to the internet. So to do this, more or less, we will need to do an, uh, an object to represent our internal network. So net. 10.10.0.0/16, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but uh, you can actually change colors on the objects. Uh, so you can have it like sea green. And what I don't like about this is that in the previous versions, Checkpoint allowed you to change the name of the colors, meaning you can have sea green representing the client network so instead of having the name sea green it will be client network um, because i have no reason whatsoever to know that this is seen sea green for me it's green and um, i would i would rather have it to say client network so i know that if i make a new object then i can color code it the way it's supposed to be, like red for internet, yellow for DMZ, and green for internal network. It gives it a bit easier to really see where the network is placed. So I hope Checkpoint would change this in the future. I haven't heard it. There's quite a lot of people complaining on this uh, because it was possible in the previous version. And when I mean previous version, I mean pre R80, but uh, never mind. Uh, so we put client network as a comment, and tags can be quite powerful as well um, because then you can tag it as a client network. So, well, there is always something. And as of last video or the video before, we just do a basic NAT to hide it behind the gateway. So, how do we actually represent an object called internet? Well, any would work. Um, the downside of any is that in checkpoint any actually means any. So if you have rules below this, uh, or if you have uh, your server network uh, connected to this firewall, well, any would include the server networks as well. So any is uh, not a good solution to use. And there is several solutions to, to fix this. Uh, for example, you can just uh, do like negligate the networks that you don't want it to, to hit. Meaning source is 10.10 and destination is anything else than 10.10. Then you need to for example, have a group of all your internal networks and uh, remember to add new internal networks to that group. Um, so that's a valid solution. There is also, uh, you can build it like zone based. So on the network object itself, the, the gateway, the, the firewall, there is a possibility to do it zone based. So on this external one, you can do edit, and you can modify it to have the security zone according to topology external zone. And we, we don't do that now. Then you can have external zone as your internet, so to say. And this will reference the external interface of the gateway. But what you need to consider here is that external interface is not sure that it's internet. It can be like a, a generic VRF or similar. You need to consider your destination. 
especially when it comes to potential any objects. Checkpoint has in recently, they have added the object internet. This is using the same, or at least I believe so, that this is using the external interface as well. For ease of sake, we, we do the destination internet and I believe that's the external interface of the, of the gateway itself. And in this case, we say that the gateway is connected to internet directly. So in the old days, well, then you would do accept any log and you would add, for example, uh, HTTPS and uh, HTTP. And more or less this, this would give you internet access. Of course, I forgot my own rule to put in a name uh, of the rule. So we need to, to change that. So always put in a name uh, for everything. So it's easier to see it. It will be present in the rule base, in the log files. Uh, you can search on it and so on. Uh, if you do like a print screen of your rule and send to an application owner, this will be very nice to, to have the names. So uh, client access to internet. And publish is used for other administrators to see what you have done. So it doesn't mean that it's active on the firewall for that you need to install the policy. Publish is only so other administrators can see what you're currently have done in the rule base. What you can do more? Well, in Checkpoint, you can actually use something called inline layers and that's quite powerful. Um, so let's delete the services and we do an application with inline layer and we do a new layer called internet access and on this layer we will use application and url filtering and we will share or we will have the possibility to share this layer in different rules and this is a quite powerful maybe not for you you can use this for internet access you can use it for ad etc etc and uh, you will see the power of this really soon so let's press ok here so what you see here is that uh, the checkpoint did add a sub rule so it did add 14.1 so what we need to do to be able to use this rule is that we need to create a rule above and it's important that we select the 14 14 dot something rule when we create it because if we create it here sorry if we create it here it will not be in the inline layer so this will be 15 so let's delete this and let's delete this one as well we'll come back to that when it comes to internet access and especially when it comes to URL and application filtering, maybe you want to limit certain applications. Uh, for example, YouTube. You shouldn't block YouTube because the staff need to be able to see my videos at least. Uh, but maybe you should consider to limit uh, the bandwidth that YouTube is actually using. Because YouTube can be work related uh, for education purposes and so on but it shouldn't hog all the bandwidth available within the company. So to do this, you can actually do uh, service and application. You can type YouTube and there's predefined objects for YouTube. And just so you are aware of this, that you need to check what how this application works if you need to have specific blades for it uh, so for example for for HTTPS inspection you you need to have it but the checkpoint can can find the YouTube application with um, with the DNS and so on so so it will classify YouTube based on both the DNS and the application signature. Um, and 
YouTube is part of media streams, so you don't need to do specific rules for specific websites. But let's do uh, YouTube, and then we do accept, and we do log. We should always log the drop rule as well. But we want to limit this, so we can do more, and then we can select a limit. And here we only have 10 and 1 gig, so let's do a new limit. Uh, strangely, here there is no new button. Uh, I think that's uh, that would be advisable for a checkpoint to add. But if you want to add new uh, limits, you need to go to object and categorization. And within limits, you need to do new limit and then limit 200. So let's do download and upload limit 200 meg. So here we do more and then we do limit 200. So now we have limit YouTube to 200 megs for all the client. And we, we can of course add like Spotify, um, etc. And you can, you can use different categorizations. So you can do, instead of doing YouTube and Spotify, you see here that it has like high bandwidth, media sharing, uh, low risk. This is the groups that it's, it's part of. So instead of writing Spotify here, you can do media sharing and streaming. Because actually YouTube is media streams and Spotify is media streams as well. So, okay, so they are, oh, media sharing, sorry. YouTube is media sharing and Spotify is media streams. So these two objects would represent YouTube and Spotify and a bunch more services like this. And we need to create a rule name. So limit me um, high band with streaming services to 200 meg. And for this to work, you need to have application and URL filtering. Uh, and we will do one more. Uh, it's quite common to, for example, block pornography. So block porn. And then you can actually do porn as a categorization. There is sex and nudity and so on, and it's different level like uh, uh, Playboy is not categorized as pornography, it's more nudity. So you need to check more or less with, uh, with HR and it can really depend on which country you're in. Some countries are more strict than others. And maybe you don't want to only block it. Maybe you want to inform your users that it's not okay to surf on pornography while at work. Um, then you can do drop and you can do block messages. And if you want to see how this how this looks, you can you can check here. And this is customizable. So you can add your own logo, you can have checkpoints logo, you can uh, um, you can type some some other things if you want that. So it's fully customizable and you can have different uh, languages. You can do your own, um, you can do your own fonts and so on. And uh, you can even send it to an external page if you want that. But uh, normally people get the, the message if they see an application control and then the page is blocked. And if the categorization is incorrect, you can always report it and then a checkpoint or a third party uh, to checkpoint will, will uh, check this and uh, maybe update the category. So uh, that is how you can block, that is how you can uh, limit. And keep in mind here, we don't have anything else uh, allowing like normal web surfing. So let's do a normal web surfing so accept log and 443 and 80 
And you see here, oh, sorry, allow um, web surfing, surfing from clients. And you see here that we use an any, but in this case, any isn't any. So in this case, the tenor to, to even reach this 14.1, you need to match this rule. So any in this case is this source and any in this case is that destination. So any is not any in this case. So you see here that you have a cleanup rule, any, any. That's only client access to internet. You can have rules permitting clients to uh, server networks, for example. Let's do a server network. Then dot 20 server network. Oh, I pressed the incorrect key. So, and, and this is uh, permitted for whatever, um, Citrix. So this is how application and URL filtering works together with inline layer. And it's possible to add this internet access, this layer on more pages. So for example, if we have clients to server network, if we have server to internet like if we have citrix or rds servers we can have this this server network to internet and then instead of having drop here we have inline layer internet access and boom we get the same rule everywhere so if we add it will be added automatically here because it's the same layer. So inline layer and application um, awareness and uh, URL filtering is something that is really powerful and that you should consider using, especially when it comes to, to web surfing. You can actually do even more cool things here. So you can have this as generic client access and you can have these rules, but you can have more rules. So you can have like, for example, marketing or maybe HR. So HR, an AD group can use streaming services without any limitation. It's just important that you think about the rule set, the rule base, because firstly, this needs to be uh, acceptable. So this needs to hit, then it needs to check here. So HR in this case, it would most likely be an AD group and those users are within the client networks. But if you are within this client network plus HR, then you use this rule. If you're not in this AD group, then you only in this part, then you will hit the any and then you will have the limitation of 200. So to use this together, with AD integration, so you can have different rules for marketing, for developers, um, for security and so on. That gives you a really powerful tool. And compared to old checkpoint, like R70 something or pre R80, in pre R80, this, this application and control was in a different tab, in a different rule set. But 
from R80. This is within the same tab and it's called the unified policy. So Checkpoint wants you to have as much power and it's easy as possible to have a unified policy for multiple functions within the firewall within the same rule base. You don't need to go back and forward. It should be an easy overview what you're actually doing. Just keep this in mind. And if you're wondering like uh, if, uh, if it can see AD groups on servers, well, yes, you can add plugins on uh, Citrix or VDIs. So it actually maps the, the session ID of the user and not the IP address. But uh, that's a topic for a different video. So I hope you did like this video and uh, please comment, like and share and um, consider to subscribe to the channel if you find this interesting. Let me know what you want to hear next and I see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.